morning. Given all the audio trouble we've been having in recent weeks, um, I'm going to lead worship from here. This system is intact. And for those who are following online, they get continuity of worship. So, um, and that matters to us, that those who are joining us from home feel fully a part of what we're doing here. So, welcome. I'm Ann Fraley, the rector of St. Peter's here in South Windsor. If you're joining us online, we're delighted you're here. And of course, always glad to see those of you who are here in person. Our order of worship begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits of, your, of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the Book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become. Oops, excuse me. She that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion... 
mourn. For no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate. Her priests groan. Her young girls grieve. And her lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters. Her enemies prosper because the Lord has made her suffer for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 137. Let's read this in unison. By the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered you, O Zion. As for our harps, we hung them up on the trees in the midst of that land. For those who led us away kept us, asked us for a song, and our Christians called us for one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song among an alien soil? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember the day of Jerusalem, O Lord, against the people of Edom, who said, down with it, down with it, even to the ground. The daughters of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy the one who pays you back for what you have done to us. Happy shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Our second reading is from the second book of Timothy, verse 1 excuse me, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of, G of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands for, do, for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed to a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day when I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the, true treasure, the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Years ago, a musical came out in the theaters. I was in junior high, so I won't tell you when that was, but that just sort of places it a little bit in history, called Oliver. Does anybody that ring a bell, a few people are nodding, has some great songs, great songs. And the story, if you're unfamiliar with it, there's a long arc to it, but in the beginning, what sort of sets the scene is that there's this orphanage, and one of the orphans is named Oliver. And as orphanages, and this took place in London, mm, turn of the century, maybe last century, um, those kids didn't get much to eat, and what they were given to eat was pretty nasty. But even so, among the the boys there in the orphanage, they decided that they wanted to ask for more. And one of them was going to be tasked with going up to the master to say, I want more. Oliver got the short straw. And up he wanders with this little bowl in his hand and his head sort of bowed and his eyes looking up through his hair and his cap. And he says, please, sir, I want some more. And the master goes, what? It's a very bold voice. And he repeats himself, please, sir, I want some more. Well, in a sense, the disciples are doing that to Jesus today. Now, granted, they haven't been getting this paltry meal, and they're fairly well cared for in their context. But they're saying to Jesus, more, more, increase our faith. And Jesus basically says, nah. He tells this story about how they should just be doing what's expected of them. And in fact, he suggests a couple of other things. And that's where I want to focus this morning. The first is he's basically saying to them is, you have what you need. You have what you need. Consider that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, the side of a mustard seed, you can move this tree into the water. That's pretty powerful faith. You have what you need. 
if you would but tap into it. But most of us go along in our life of faith and sort of we get into a ritual or a routine and pray a certain way at a certain time of day, perhaps with someone else, with not. We have our rituals related to prayer and to our faith life. But as what as happens often with rituals, they kind of get stuck. Think of it a little as though as a young child, if you kept wearing the same pair of shoes all the time, after a while, your feet don't fit into those shoes. And you think something needs to give. And very wisely, you say to your mother or your father or your caregiver, I need new shoes. So in that particular sense, some adjusting and adapting is necessary. Now, we all know a fair amount about adapting these days. During COVID, we adapted a lot. We adapted here, you did at home, you did related to your workplace, with your social life, in all manner of ways, we learned how to adapt. Some adaptations were easier than others, but we did what we had to do to make sure we got what we needed. In the same way, with the tools available to us in our life of faith, we have what we need, and when we need to adapt, we say, okay, this time of day isn't working so well. Let's try a different time of day. Or these prayers are feeling kind of stale. Let's see if there's another way I can pray that will deepen and enrich my prayer life and my relationship with God. When things aren't working the way they need to, we adapt. We look around and see if we have what we need to do that at adapting. And if not, then we go out and say, I need to start over. I need to add to my toolkit. And here's the second part of what Jesus is getting at today. He is all we need. Now, not necessarily he, the person. We can't possess Jesus. When people say Jesus is all I need, I often say, what does that mean? I can tell you what it means for me. It means that Jesus has given me an example of how to live this life. He has taught me how to look at myself and love myself, the great commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus also has taught me how to love other people, how to extend mercy and compassion to practice forgiveness, to set aside differences and to work toward the common good, to seek reconciliation and restoration when there's a breach. And at all times, at all times, to embrace the love of God available to us always. So even though the disciples are saying, increase our faith, in Jesus saying, not so fast, he's really saying to us, stop and take a look at your world, at your resources, at all the things you know about your life and about the things available to you in your life. We have the capacity to increase our own faith because Jesus and God have given us those tools and that example. So when we need to increase our faith or see that we need to or believe that we need to increase that faith, first we can look at what we're doing and how we might adapt what we're doing. And second, we can look to Christ and say, what does Jesus have to tell me about where I am in this moment? If I need to take time apart to pray, he gives us examples of when and how to do that. He gives us words to use to know how to pray. He teaches us about the ab abundance that we have within our own grasp when he teaches about loaves and fishes and sharing that abundance with others in need. He talks about walking humbly with God and about how forgiving each other is the means toward a closer relationship with God. He talks about how we might enable and enact and empower our own healing by getting out of our own way. He addresses stubbornness and how that can be an obstacle in our path. Again and again, when people come to Jesus and say, this is what I need, he's able to say and explain to them, look around you. 
You have what you need to make this happen. And sometimes it's a matter of digging deep and discovering we have the courage we thought we lacked, that we had a broader heart than we knew that we felt, or that the extension of our own community included people we had overlooked. When we want to say, increase our faith, Jesus wants to say to us, you have that faith already. Dig deep, open your arms wide, expand your vision, look past the landscape immediately in front of you, and you will find that you have what you need. So when we want to say, increase our faith, Jesus is there with us to say, I'm here with you, to love you, embrace you, encourage you, empower you, and walk with you every step into this new way of living our faith. I fully believe that by this day's end, with a little bit of tending, we will each find our faith increased in fact and in deed. And over and over again, God finds ways to open our world to practice that faith, to discover that it has grown and deepened and gives us opportunities to exercise all the things available to us to live that faith. This day, embrace that faith. Live it, feel it, act it, and know that who you are and what you have is, in fact, enough. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in reciting the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, Form 6, found on page 392 in the prayer book. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. 
for Mark Moran, the Bure family, Bill Lyon, Al, Priscilla, Andrea, Renee, Tyler, Pat Jennings, Amber Birkin, Kirk, Devin Walters, Rosemarie, Lee, Malachi Roach and family, and Linda, and those committed to our ongoing prayers. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, Ian, and Laura, our bishops. For Jeffrey, our bishop-elect. For Nigerian bishops, John and Marcus. For Anne, our rector and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and, and concerns of this congregation, for the raising up of leadership at St. Peter's, for the following needs, a treasurer in 2023, faith formation leadership for our youth, and members of our 2023 stewardship team, for the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through mission, especially Africa Education Partnership. For members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad, and for their families, especially Michael Friel and Richard Nunez Jr., who are deployed, Kenneth Fraley Jr., Jason Dorval, and Ryan Waite for victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, especially the people of Ukraine, for communities in Florida impacted by Hurricane Ian, for residents of Eastern Kentucky recovering from devastating flooding, <clears throat> for victims of gun violence in the United States, their families and communities, for indigenous Asian American and Pacific Islander peoples impacted by racism, by centuries of anti-black bias and for others seeking to undo the harm of racism and hate. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, for groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our building, especially the Hindu community group. Hear us, Lord. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for all the animals we have as pets in our world, the ministry of the Eucharistic ministers, for parish members, the Horwitz family, Marka Holroyd and the Hubney family, for Nancy Torchio Zemko and Glenn Flanagan who are celebrating birthdays this week. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace that feels safe to you.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
the great thanksgiving continues with Eucharistic prayer B, found on page 367 in the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Peter and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in 
the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father,
using the prayer of thanksgiving found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament. I never remember, do I bless or, or do announcements next? Announcements, okay, have a seat. I think I can do it without my glasses on. Um, first of all, for those of you who came and joined us for breakfast between services, thank you for that. It was a lovely time of just kind of relaxed sharing and some really good food, and it was just nice to be casual and have that time together, so thanks for that. This afternoon at two o'clock, Weather permitting, we'll be on the front lawn. Otherwise, we'll move indoors. Bring your pet to be blessed. If you don't want to bring your pet, but want to bring a memento of your pet or something that represents your pet, let's say you have an unruly critter like I do at home, um, bring that. If you want to remember a pet who has passed, bring a photo or something, again, to remember that pet. And stuffed animals are very welcome. So all manner of critters in your life. Please bring them for blessing and remembrance this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Next thing on our docket this month, on the 22nd of October, our spaghetti dinner. We're resuming the previously annual spaghetti dinner, October 22nd. Details about timing will be forthcoming. And then the next day, we're instituting what we are calling Undie Sunday where we are encouraging people to bring undergarments to be given to members of a homeless community in Hartford. That's an item of clothing, apparel that they um, are in dire need of. So we have that. And that's kind of, oh, and then crop walk. Amanda, is there anything about that you want to draw attention to? Thanks. Quick recap for those of you online who can't hear her from the back of the church. October 16th, 1 o'clock, Wapping Church. A team will walk to draw um, uh, awareness to and help support financially those dealing with uh, food insecurity in our community. Crop Walk. October 16th. I was about to say September. October 16th, 1 p.m. There are ways of signing up to help either to walk or to donate online and look in the bulletin for more or see Amanda. Okay, I think, oh, I see another hand up. Diane. Um, considering your donation, we want to save them. So when you say these, what do you mean? The inserts, the in, in Christ alone. The inserts for In Christ Alone. So we're going to begin assembling a new songbook, and it will have the music, like what you have in front of you. Um, the challenge is the folded over size, like the present songbook is, which will shrink this the music and perhaps impact its readability or full size. So, but in the meantime, don't toss, don't toss the music. Diane suggests you just put them in a pile on the usher's table at the back. Other announcements? Okie doke. Then go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, tend to the sick, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.